Greetings. We are at the halfway mark of the semester, so congrats on sticking through. In this topic, we'll be looking at the differences and commonalities among local, state, and national levels of government. You'll also learn more about the symbiotic and sometimes contentious relationship among all levels. You've already gotten a taste of this in your examination of federalism. As a reminder, federalism characterizes the nature of the U.S. government, whereby powers and responsibilities are divided at various levels of government. Additionally, you'll remember that the Constitution broadly indicates what responsibilities belong to the national or otherwise known as federal government and non-federal duties. So when examining each level of government, you'll notice key similarities, such as having a key legal document. So for example, at the state and national level, there's the Constitution, and what mirrors that at the local level might be a city charter. Additionally, each level of government has similar governing bodies and political actors that have executive and representative functions. So at the national level, you have the president. At the state level, the executive is the governor. At the local level, the executive is a mayor or a city manager. And then at the national and state level, you have branches such as executive, legislative, and judicial. And then at the local level, you have various departments that function based upon need. And then at the national and state local and state levels, you have representatives such as national and state senators or representatives. And then at the local level, representatives are typically found at city council, neighborhood councils, or commissions. So because local, state, and national governments share and divide responsibilities, it is possible to have a harmonious and also a contentious relationship among them. So under the column here where I have harmonious relationships, federal support state and local governments through grants and technical advice and implementing policies, otherwise known as business services. The state government supports local government and technical advice and implementing policies as well. And federal, state, and local governments can work together to ensure coordination of resources. So for example, things that you might see during emergency or natural disaster. And then there are also contentious relationship practices. So for example, state and local governments may disagree with federal mandates and express that disapproval with suing the national government or not complying with federal law. So for example, you saw that with the debates around sanctuary cities. Additionally, federal governments may need to intervene in state and local affairs if they are deemed unconstitutional or harmful. For example, the Voting Rights Act or desegregation of public schools. And lastly, states and local governments may be at odds if a local governing body is seen as low performing. So for example, you may have the state taking over local school districts. Another key part in executing local, state, and national government responsibilities are the presence of various non-government organizations. And so you'll find a lot of this among what are called public-private partnerships. And at every level of government, private sector and quasi-public organizations assist in the implementation of government goods and services in multiple areas, such as transportation, education, healthcare, and more. So if you want more information about public-private partnerships in California, please go to the BayAreaEconomy.org. Now, when thinking about the pros and cons of local, state, and national governments working together and with outside organizations, use the heuristics of a team. So when we've all, you know, we've all had experiences with teams, um, whether it is working with our friends, working with classmates on a school project. So some of the similarities that I'm going to be noting here, you can find between the teamwork uh, that you've had and the collaboration pros and cons uh, when there are relationships among the federal um, and state governments, as well as with governments and uh, private sector organizations. So the pros. By working in teams or collaborating, you have more and diverse resources. There's the ability to mitigate one party's weakness by using another party's strength. And you're able to get more work done quickly than as opposed to doing it alone. And then you're able to strategically work together because there's a common goal. Now, cons when it comes to collaboration and teamwork is that there is maybe poor communication and tension. People or parties in the collaboration or team don't understand their individual roles and responsibilities. And it's possible that not all people in the team or collaboration are pulling their weight. 
And then lastly, different people in a collaboration or team, they have conflicting agendas. So that is it. Now your next steps, of course, as you know, is to go through this lecture again and review the supplemental learning material several times. It's really important to make sure that you're going through the articles and taking a deep dive into the websites available because it can help you make much better responses to your ebook chapter exercises, as well as help you with the Canvas exercise, which is going to be a quiz. And so of course that means to start the ebook chapter four exercises and do the quiz. And again, just want to reiterate that it's important to make sure you're incorporating elements from other parts of the learning material into your responses. And we'll be having a special treat on March 17th with Ms. Vanessa Serrano from the LA Neighborhood Councils, which is a um, governing body uh, that is unique to LA County. And um, she's going to be talking to you about Empowerment LA, the Neighborhood Councils, and that is a website that's part of the supplemental learning materials. And her her talk is going to really help you to better understand and to address some of your homework questions. So please uh, come to that or try to come to that on March 17th during our Zoom session. And of course, I am available to help if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you later. What's my purpose? What do I grab a slippery surface, a heart attack? And sometimes you just gotta believe there's 